interesting situation. There was a bit of overlap. Uh, long story, so what we're going to do is we're sort of adapting here. And we're going to kind of co design and alter. So this way you'll get two different perspectives on the um, Anyway, uh, so, you know, please bear with us if it seems a, a little, you know, rough in spots. I think you know, we'll make up for it. Angular is pretty cool. So, there's a lot of people here, so you must probably agree. Yeah. Just to get us started out the room, how many people have used Angular? You, like uh, a hobby or an actual work process? Uh, how many people have used it in a work process? What? Uh, in a work project, like for you, you did something and used that you know, for a post it application or something. Yeah, can you hear in the back? Okay, I mean, I have a. It's okay, you gotta kind of scream in this room. Though. Okay, I was saying there's a little behind the mic, but you know. You can figure out how to get that to work. Alright, I won't use my inside voice. Then. Um, okay, good. So you're. The talk that I kind of came up with, uh, and I it. It, it's sort of an introduction, and that's, well, that's in the program, so hopefully your expectations are set appropriately. So, um, so let's just, let's just begin. Um, but I wanted to first give a background about myself. Uh, I'm not the expert on all things JavaScript or, or you know, all the, JavaScript frameworks out there. Uh, I've done a number of you know, rich client applications, uh, but uh, the, the frameworks that I most uh, experienced with, I mean, probably everybody in this room <coughs> has experience with jQuery. I wouldn't really call it a framework so much. That's uh, one of the hardware. But I have some experience with Backbone as well. And for me, using Angular after having used Backbone was like, I was so, you know, after that point. So, um, and uh, yeah, I tried Knockout as well, um, which is the one that Microsoft had in the Visual Studio. Knockout's actually great, uh, but when I discovered Angular, you know, I just haven't used anything um, using Knockout yet. Um, I think Michael gave a great uh, description of Angular's place in the world. And, I found it in 2012, but at the time it was like version 0.9 or something. So I took a bit of a chance on using it because who knew, well, who knew that in 2013 there'd be like half a dozen books and Angular conferences, but um, it, it was just that good. It, it, it really sold me at the time, and so, so I went with it. So, anyway, uh, I don't know. And, uh, well, my background is not related to my development at all. I sort of have I work, um, I work at the Cuyahoga Land Bank in uh, downtown Cleveland. We deal with uh, Fort Coast real estate. A lot of people might have heard about us. Um, so we basically acquire properties through tax foreclosures or things like that, and, you know, depending on um, the demographics and uh, other neighborhood information, even property values, and so on and so forth. We basically either <coughs> demolish a house or, you know, help someone renovate it or do it on our own. Um, so we basically have an internal web application, which we sort of call it the property profile system, which basically has a record of all the uh, all the data, all the information that we have on that property and what we're doing with it, pictures and so on and so forth. And, um, we, we can, and, and that has been written in PHP. Recently we started, uh, we, um, so over the last year, um, other counties and cities within the state and in the region have been um, have sort of come up with this idea of you know hey maybe we should have our own land bank deal with the foreclosure crisis and the housing crisis. Um, even big cities like Chicago, the Cook counties now you know they're coming up land. Anyway, so we've been we've been in, the, in this industry for a while and um, um, we have our own internal um, web application. We started to. People started asking us, hey, why don't you license this to us? And we were like, okay, well, we need to rethink the way we wrote it. And so now we are, you know, switching to more of a sort of a, a, a front end and back end kind of a system where on the back end you have a restful back end written in Python 
and it's on App Engine, and you know, a high replication database, and it does all the cool stuff. On the front end, you have basically, you're just using Angular. And so that's where I started using Angular, and sort of have been slowly learning more and more about it. Angular is my first MVC or MV star framework. You know, it's basically MV, what the hell? Because, <laughs> um, um, you know, some people say, oh, it's model view controller. Some people say it's model view view model. Some people say it's a model view presenter framework. And there are all kinds of words for it. And the safest path from what I've seen and heard and learned from other people is that you just say, well, it's an MV star framework. It's got a model, it's got a view. And there's a controller somewhere, either it's explicit or implicit, and you know, some kind of combination of that. So, um, yeah, so Angular has been my first framework, and I have, um, so far I have not had any problems with it. It basically is, if you are looking to design a single page application where um, you, you want to have that, you want to use, you, you want to create that RESTful backend and then use it in different areas, you, 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 you got to try it out. Actually, demo this. That first one, 
uh, you know, what's the value in the first one? Okay, big deal, I've injected something. Um, but this example here, there's actually two-way data binding. And this is what not my socks off the first time I saw it. Um, you know, one-way data binding, you know, a lot of us have written JavaScript where, you know, jQuery, it's, it's real easy. You know, you can copy and paste from their, uh, their Ajax uh, help page. You can, you know, grab RESTful data, throw it up on the screen, you know, really go to town on that. But that's one direction. You know, try doing that in the other direction. Try, um, try modifying, and I don't mean pushing down to the server necessarily, but you know, try modifying the view or the model based on you know other things that are happening on the page. So I will just a real quick demo of here. This and uh, maybe we can tell an amusing anecdote while I load up my. I forgot to load up my project here, so it take me just a minute. But, Yeah, although I'm going to be lazy in only one of these things, so it seems like we're about 50-50. Quick question. Uh, 
uh, ending show, so yeah. What if my name is Zero? Uh, you're boy. You're the JavaScript expert, Dan. Uh, <laughs> that's one of those. You're probably trying to sell that book, JavaScript in the Parks. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't that matter. Just book. I just tried it. Okay, because that's that JavaScript truthiness thing. Yeah. Also, if your name is false, you're hosed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it actually does coerce it. Wow. And everybody's familiar with this, like, um, in, right. like what in JavaScript? Well, there's a book called JavaScript: The Good Parts, and that there's like a, a, a joke GIF going around from GIF, uh, where JavaScript: The Good Parts is this, that, and then there's a book called JavaScript Reference Manual: Is This That. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, in JavaScript, one of the gotchas is when does an expression evaluate to true versus false? And you asked a great question. So, um, so let that be a lesson to you to make sure that your logic is not disambiguous. I stole this example, and I think it's kind of, you know, if I look at that, I had to stare at it for a second to realize what. But um, anyway, uh, right, so. Um, here I have simple text inputs. Uh, I have an Angular directive that says the model that is bound to that this element is uh, user dot name. Now I could have just said name there, uh, and, and then it would have resolved it. As long as, <coughs> name, as long as I say the same thing about. So anyway, let me run this. And when I come in here initially, uh, this is great having two screens with some um, Okay, 300 cents per I'm going to quickly view the source here and so you can see what I'm um, that I do have an input, I have a div, and you can't see it. And my div is actually invisible. So. Um, I'm going to attempt. I was trying to bring up the Chrome Dev Tools, but my Windows seems to be. Okay, never mind. Um, I'll just go back to the Okay, so that div is invisible because there's no content and the logic is telling it to hide itself unless there's content. So as soon as I type something in, then it, um, it, it injects that into that placeholder with the handlebars. Um, one thing, yeah, so going back to the source code real quick. Stick, stick HTML in there, like uh, open div, close div. Actually, right. that's a great idea. Um, <coughs> here's a tag. Uh, it, it's Angular. That, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. Angular is really good about um, 
this case. Uh, safety of the, of the data in, in the model. Um, when I was preparing this demo, I actually had a problem trying to get it to display some data because it considered it unsafe X, XML. Hmm. There's ways around that, but um, <coughs> but if if I were to view the not the source code but the representation of what's there, it would be you know, what is it ampersand lt semicolon you know br. I mean it, it's it's HTML encoded, so it's very safe. And if you want it to render some HTML, um, you have to uh, you have to do something that I'm not going to demonstrate in this talk. Uh, there's ways around it. Anybody who's used Razor, for instance, there's something similar in there. You, gotta, you basically have to say, this data that you're going to throw on the page, please interpret it as HTML. You know, otherwise, you will get literally something like this. So, um, anybody have any other questions? Or, does, does that make sense? Okay. So, okay. Um, and the whole point is, no event's necessary. Uh, there's events happening behind the scenes, and you can sort of plug into those and so on. I'm not going to do that tonight. But just the, the basic stuff, hiding and showing elements, uh, moving data around, it, it's, um, it, it can be done very easily. Uh, on the Angular demo page, they'll have examples where you have a, a one input box and then five different ways of representing the data. Here I have a one-to-one, -one, but you don't necessarily need to do it that way. Um, I I was gonna I, I was having trouble bringing this up in my Chrome, um, but in Google Chrome they have if you use Dev Tools they have a plugin which is really amazing. Actually, Dev Tools is really amazing, but they call it Battering. So if you just Google uh, Angular Battering, it will show you your model, and you can actually go in there and modify it if you want to. So it's 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 really cool. Um, I'm sure you probably yeah. use that a lot. Yeah, it basically shows you the same. Yeah, it, and it, for me, it's like one of those like whoa features. Like like you know, we're used to developing, right? We're used to developing with HTML and JavaScript, and this is just it's to me it's amazing. I can go in and I can just poke around in there, and, and it, it reminds me of uh, you know like. Studio or something. By the way, I'm agnostic about uh, the whole question of Windows versus Linux. Um, you probably have a, you have the great stuff over here too. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I just wanted to get into. I mean, how many here? You've all heard the term, or most of you have heard the term, like model view controller, model view presenter. Uh, you know, as he was saying. Uh, I think Angular calls it model view, whatever. They actually have an acronym. It's MV star or. It's basically, it's actually more of uh, MVVM. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to use this for a minute. So, you've got, in MEC, you've got basically a bunch of model 